this. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, this is early in the morning for me. <laughs> or in the middle of the night, I start again. Good, good morning, hello, and welcome to our session about designing equitable decision-making in the Wikimedia movement. And I'm just here to give you quite a very quick introduction about what this is all about. You know, if we are talking about, uh, and I'm Alice Wiegand, I'm the chair of the board of Wikimedia Deutschland, and uh, I'm introducing my peers as well. Nora Czekasta, also from the board of Wikimedia Deutschland, and Nicole Eber, she's team lead for global relationship, strategy, and governance, and governance at Wikimedia Deutschland, yeah. Okay, so we also shift our titles and uh, descriptions of our departments from time to time. And we're talking about equitable decision making and about uh, governance. You have to help me. So now I have to... I'm a bit lost, so do I have... <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So... Just to give you the general framing about uh, what this is all about, when we talk about governance, we can pick up a lot of descriptions and definitions about what this is about. And in the end, it comes to the question, who does decide what? And are the decisions made on the best, best possible place so that they promote and provide what, what we want to uh, what we want to achieve with these decisions and that they do not fill bureaucracy with things we do not need. And uh, in our environment, of course, that is something which is very, very important. We see here a lot of chapters, user groups, we have the foundation and we are talking about other, other entities or other groups which may come in the future. And currently the movement it's not that, they, that we do not have any kind of governance. Of course, we have a governance, but we have places where it is not really, really clear who makes which decisions and if that is really the best place to, to make these decisions. It's not written down anyway. We, have, we do not have a playbook of how we make decisions which affect the entire communities. And we have a group of people, and some of them are here in the room, the MCDC Movement Charter Drafting Committee, who tried to, to, to draft a charter for our movement to hopefully make some of these points a bit clearer. May the members of the MCDC just raise their hand to hello members of the MCDC, and us, please, yes. <laughs> And that is why people are writing a charter, to make these things clearer and to help us guide through um, to, the, to the future. I'm handing over to you. Thank you, Alice. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about the current situation um, so that we can see where decisions are either currently made or could be made in the future. And so, um, first of all, we, as we all know, I guess, we have the communities, we have affiliates in our movement, and we have, of course, the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, then, what, um, the movement strategy recommended to implement other forms, other entities, into the movement, which is one on the one hand regional and thematic hubs, who will empower existing and future communities to have the capacity and resources to make and implement their own decisions to meet all the different needs in different themes and different regions. And um, aside from the hubs, there's also the recommendation to establish the Global Council, which is representative of the movement in its role and in its composition. So these two are being introduced basically right now with what the Movement um, Charter Drafting Committee is drafting and writing. And these are the players and entities we are going to talk about because you can already prepare yourself for some group, interactive group work. And we are going to talk about them later. And Nora is talking about 
how we are going to do this. So for the upcoming uh, group work, we've picked three areas of interest that will affect your work in the movement directly. Uh, so we will discuss in a minute about decision making regarding to number one, money, meaning how are funds raised and how are they distributed. The second area is technology and projects. And the third area is affiliation and hubs. So you will uh, choose uh, uh, the area of decision you're making you're interested in. And uh, let's make sure that all groups are um, more or less of the same size. Um, each group will discuss uh, three concrete examples of decisions made in that area that affect the whole movement. During the conversation, keep in mind the different players that Nicole just mentioned. So the Wikimedia Foundation, the community, hubs, affiliates, and the Global Council. Uh, we encourage you to share your thoughts and uh, be open and don't be afraid to disagree. Um, we will actually also take notes uh, on Etherpad, so we will have uh, we will appoint uh, one note taker for each group, and uh, for the wrap up session, we will also need one person highlighting the main points afterwards. Um, as my background is in fundraising, um, I'm happy to facilitate the group regarding money. And uh, we have uh, come up with uh, three examples um, of questions we're discussing. So um, the first question is, imagine you're a Wikimedia chapter and you need an annual grant of $150,000 to pay your first staff and uh, plan things for the upcoming year. So who should decide if your proposal gets funding and why should they uh, decide this? Um, this is the first question and, oops, forgot. No, this is actually the one, the, the, the correct side. The second question is who should be able to do banner fundraising and why? And the third question we will be discussing is who decides the criteria to raise funds with the Wikimedia trademark? Then there is a group of technology and projects uh, facilitated by Alice. So with me, you can discuss the questions who should de define technical development areas or priorities for the movement. Uh, to be a bit uh, more concrete on, on, on this one, uh, it is about, for example, who decides if fixing comments is or should become a priority for the Wikimedia Foundation or not, who, is, who should make this decision. Currently, this is decided by the WMF after consulting with communities and affiliates. And uh, I do think that it's worth talking about that. We have two other questions as well, which is who should set standards for and approve sister projects? And the question about language projects also, who is responsible for that? Thank you. And last but not least, we have affiliation and hubs. We also have uh, three questions here. And the first is, for ex um, who should recognize and de-recognize affiliates? As an example, if you would like to start a new chapter, who should decide that you can do that? And also, who gives you, uh, can decide who gets, uh, where to get the necessary support? And then also, who should be able to decide if you don't I don't know, play by the rules if you get de-recognized. Currently, this is basically the AFCOM, um, which is a board, the affiliations committee. Yes, uh, uh, Wojtek, we have you as an AFCOM member over here, over there at the end of the room. Um, they recognize user groups and the Wikimedia Foundation board recognizes chapters and thematic organizations after consulting, of course, with the AFCOM. Um, and the AFCOM also advises the Wikimedia Foundation Board on de-recognition of affiliates. We also have two other questions. Who decides uh, the conditions for hubs to be recognized? Are they any different from affiliates, for example? And then also, who can decide what a hub should be actually working on? 
And now, ah, yeah, see you in 30 minutes. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> no, we, are, we would like to uh, divide you in these three uh, groups. Okay, let's not share the highlight. I'm going to put the groups up here again. We have printouts also for each group so that you can read all the questions again. And you can also, if you find one question so interesting, spend the whole half hour on one question. The important thing is, as Nora said, please also we will go with you into the groups and we need one scribe to take note on the etherpad the links are also on the things print out and also we need someone to report back to the larger group because we want to come back together in this large group to share highlights and what we agreed or probably also even disagreed on so a highlight can also be something that you couldn't come to an agreement on is it clear? Like, does anyone have questions? Do you already know which group you want to go in? Shall we just start? So I would just say, do, okay, Alice is group um, two, technology and project. That's over there. Nora is going to be here with group one, money, and I'm going to the back uh, to talk about affiliates and hubs. Okay.
can remember having something to make or break, you know, in jazz, and and saying to myself, now how should I attack this practical problem of becoming a, a jazz musician as a, a making a living and so on? And, and I said, well, ultimately I came to the conclusion that all I must do is take care of the music, and if I really do that, somebody's going to come and open the door of the closet and say, hey, we're looking for you.
my mic uh, on again? Yes. Please come back to the front of the room. It's great to see the fruitful discussion still going on. I hope this was a good kickoff to kickstart all these conversations for the next days. But we would like to hear from each group now what their highlights were. You can, as I said, you can share a highlight, but you can also share what you disagreed or agreed on, or one burning question that you would like to give back to the group for the whole week and weekend. And we are going to start with the money group. Always money first. <laughs> Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes is sufficient. Two minutes, yeah. yes. So, money, money, money must be funny in a wiki world. <laughs> and it has been. So, I'm Capistin Mara, I'm the chair of Wikimedia France, and I will share for the group one for money. We started with a brilliant case of a chapter seeking new funds. But actually, it seems that the point that was experienced the most by the people in the room was when you did more fonts at the chapter or as a Wikimedia organization, and then you're blocked, and it's a bit complicated. We, of course, spoke of uh, the FDC, which existed before the Font Dissemination Committee. Words have been used, uh, such as bureaucratic, globalized, volunteer lead, and I say them without uh, any mark of uh, approval or resources. Uh, we proposed different solutions. Um, there was a seeking for alternatives and not depend on a single font. Uh, for example, we spoke of a possibility of either uh, requesting money from a global font, mostly for big organizations, for regional funds, maybe linked to hubs, and potentially for specific bias tactic funds aiming at a specific um, fight. So that's it uh, for how we should decide on the money. Of course, more precisions on the pads that I encourage you to, to read. We, of course, after that spoke of the banner and we should be able to run the banner. And um, points were made from quite big chapters, notably Wikimedia France and Wikimedia Canada, that chapters like this should be able to, to, to run the banner because to better take into account uh, the fiscal advantage in these countries and avoid confusion, but also to fit uh, and have some cultural adequation to the Wikipedia public in these countries. We have a very interesting perspective from uh, the movement charter saying, okay, you big chapters think like that, but we have uh, different needs for smaller chapters, for example, because yes, a fundraising is difficult and some uh, would like to Wikimedia Foundation to keep the machine running, but also potentially ups. Thank you. Thanks, Kapusin. And now, who is reporting back from the technology group? Please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so we're group, group two. So our, fir uh, our first question was, uh, who should define the technical development uh, areas or priorities for the movement? So currently, uh, the board ratifies but it's not advising on the on, on the on the priorities and the technical movements. Uh, other affiliates also have their, their own say in the in the projects. For example, uh, Wikidata does a lot of the development but by Wiki Deutschland uh, and for example the, the education program does a lot of for the event dashboard. So it's so it's it's a it's a there's a whole bunch of different actors that are in play uh, for in terms of technical development. Uh, we noticed there's a little bit of uh, of uh, a dissonance between the uh, whether the community wish list survey is a good model of democracy. We understand that a lot of people vote on a project. It means that there's a lot of interest, but at the same time, 
uh, not every project is as large as Commons or Wikipedia. So a lot of the smaller projects, they would never be able to get sufficient number of votes to have their uh, wish list ever populate to the top. Um, so that kind of like brings in the question of equality versus equity. So that was, a, that was one of the example is that the process done by the community feels more equality than actual, true actual equity. Uh, and there's also a trade-off between uh, legitimacy of the volunteer editors and having experts that make the, the decisions. Our second question was uh, who should set the standard and approve uh, sister projects? So again, currently this is done by the foundation uh, and new projects have in the past have generally pre presented to the board because it caught the, uh, of the interest of one of the board, existing board members at the time. So that's how the projects were proposed. And uh, one of the example is actually from my own project, which is WikiJournal. I, the process is kind of broken uh, because we are already stuck in the proposal stage for four years without any formal approval by the board. Uh, and we noticed that uh, because new sister projects are proposed every three, every five years or even longer, so there's not really like a core committee comparing to language committee that approves new language being built because those are usually have several in, in, within a year. Um, and who should decide on shutting down the projects? Uh, uh, this was raised uh, by, by one of our group participants be, uh, because they don't want to approve new projects because they fear that once it's created, you cannot shut it down because the process is very onerous or even near impossible to shut it down. Uh, so it was suggested to try out a project before approving it, uh, anything, kind of like finding a testing ground to ensure there's sufficient editors, there's no spams lingering around and the commitment. It's there before it's uh, being approved. Oh, okay, thanks. And I'll, I'll quickly go to the last one. So who should set the standard at, uh, in approving language projects? As I said, it's, uh, it's done primarily by the language committee and then presented to the, to the board and only very small amount of people knows the actual decision process. So we think that uh, there should be a little bit better advertising about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now the last group affiliation and hubs, Remy. Thank you. Okay. All right. So for the affiliation and hubs group, First of all, we talk a lot about uh, the, yeah, the actual situation, and um, that's now I'm struggling with the computer, sorry. Uh, but now that we are okay, that there are a lot of inefficiencies in the system, um, it's always complicated to understand why an affiliate is recognized and another could be derecognized. Uh, now there are some uh, support from the AFCOM to conflict resolution, uh, but still could have improvement uh, for the future year. We all agree that to start a new chapter and get the necessary support, uh, the AFCOM uh, still be the, um, the um, perfect partner to another new organization. Uh, to provide documentation and support and talk with the Global Council because we all agree the Global Council uh, should be uh, the new organization who could recognize and de-recognize uh, affiliates. We also talk about uh, hubs and uh, we agree that uh, they should be have the same process, same way for hubs to affiliate. That's also on the role of the Global Council to recognize uh, hubs. But to define uh, what hubs should be working on, uh, what the topics uh, of a hub, uh, it should rest on the responsibility of the affiliates or members of this hub to decide what is useful for them, uh, first of all. Um, I think I told everything. Yeah? Yeah, and uh, on on this uh, subject, it's uh, yeah we talk about that it's a member of hubs who decide what hubs will do. Yeah, okay, you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank <clears throat> thank you everyone for the conversation. I think we could have like three hours uh, for this to talk about everything. So, but we have the whole uh, week ahead of us and. Um, 
Of course, it doesn't end here. It basically just starts. So uh, what are the next steps? I mean, first of all, who hasn't done it yet, please go ahead and review and comment on the Movement Charter draft and also look at the talk pages. There are already a couple of uh, interesting feedbacks that you can also engage with. Then also go to the governance sessions at Wikimania, what you already did, but please keep on uh, doing so. There will be a next session here uh, about this as well. And then also a quick uh, advertis advertisement for the affiliates who are eligible. Please come to the summit, Wikimedia Summit online engagement sessions. If you haven't registered yet, and we, we have a couple of affiliates who haven't uh, registered yet, please do so. We extended the deadline until after Wikimania, so you can still um, have a chance to participate in the Wikimedia Summit. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat>